welcome back to music my loves so last week we had a mystery to solve with the miss stacy on the music news that was pretty fun this week we have a game for you to play by the end of class today you are going to be playing a game where you are a contestant and you are going to try to win some virtual pretend prizes wish I could give you real prizes, but the best I can do is the virtual ones for right now. So be ready for at the end of class to play our game in order to win some virtual prizes. I'm super excited about that. So to get started today, we're going to talk a little bit about a holiday that is coming up on November 11th. Whenever you are watching this, either it has just happened or it is about to happen. November 11th is Veterans Day. Veterans Day is an amazing holiday in which we celebrate our veterans of the armed forces. I found this nice little video that explains a little bit about Veterans Day, how it came about, and uh, why we celebrate it. So take a little uh, gander at this video about Veterans Day and and I will be back with you in a moment. Okay, it's time to get our learn on with fun facts about Veterans Day. Starting off, do you even know what a veteran is? Now, do you? It's cool if you don't, because I got you. A veteran is any person who served for any length of time in any military service branch. A military service branch can either be the Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, or the Coast Guard. Now going back in time, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed November 11th as Armistice Day. So it wasn't always called Veterans Day. This was done on the one year anniversary of the end of World War I. A cool celebration that is done on this day as well is two years later after Armistice Day was founded, an unknown American soldier was laid to rest from World War I. They buried him at Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. The burial spot that is still represented today on Veterans Day is called the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Going back in time as well, an act that was approved on May 13, 1938, made November 11th a legal holiday known as Armistice Day back then. So, although Armistice Day originally celebrated those who died in World War I, this eventually changed too in the early 1940s. It was changed to honor all veterans at that point. Now, flipping back in time, yeah, Veterans Day was originally Armistice Day. And this all changed in 1954. President Eisenhower officially changed the name of the holiday from Armistice Day. And now, of course, as you can see today, we celebrate by calling it Veterans Day. Another thing about Veterans Day is a lot of people get it confused with Memorial Day. But I'm about to help you out. You see, Memorial Day honors American service members who died in service to their country or as a result of injuries from battle. With Veterans Day, Veterans Day honors all American veterans that are living or dead who served their country honorably during war or during peace. Now, taking you to school and giving you a little spell check, a lot of people misspell Veterans Day by using an apostrophe. But with the Veterans Day spelling, it's all about the veterans, meaning a bunch of veterans, not the fact that they own the day, but it's a day for veterans, plural. A little spell check for your grammar, you know what I mean? And I hope you enjoy those fun facts about Veterans Day. I'll see you next time. Peace. That was interesting, right? Miss Stacy learned a few things watching that as well, and I've been around for 40 years and learned some new things about Veterans Day while watching that video. I have a few veterans in my life as well. My dad it was military, and my grandfather and several other of my family members and friends were all military or are military members. Um, of the armed forces. So we're super appreciative. Like it said, make sure that if you see someone wearing a hat that says they're a veteran, make sure you tell them thank you for their service and all that they have done for us. So what's really cool about Veterans Day so there's usually parades and when you have parades there's things called marches a march a march is a style of music that's really really unique um, and it's usually performed by a band sometimes an orchestra usually it's performed by a band one of the most famous composers, remember a composer is someone who writes the music. One of the most famous March composers was named John Phillips Sousa. 
John Philip Sousa. You might not know his name, but I am sure you know his music. Here is one of his very famous marches that he wrote, and I bet that you recognize it. Listen to this. that one right I'm sure that you do it's played in lots and lots of marches parades and in concerts at different holidays over the years over the year one year several years just one over the year so that is a march by John Philip Sousa so John Philip Sousa had an interesting life he was going to join the circus and his father found out and instead of joining the circus he enrolled him in the military band so it's really interesting how people's lives can change and the things that come from them from those changes who knew that he would become a famous march king he's known as the march king so watch this little tidbit about john philip sousa <laughs> I'm Naomi Lewin. Welcome to Classics for Kids. John Philip Sousa, the most American of composers, was born in Washington, D.C. in 1854. Sousa was the son of immigrants, people born in another country who moved here. His mother came from Germany, and his father's family was from Portugal, where Sousa is a very common name. Sousa's father played trombone in the United States Marine Band. Even before he started school, John Philip Sousa took music lessons. He learned to play all kinds of instruments, including violin, flute, piano, cornet, and trombone. After some neighbors complained, Sousa got extra help on the trombone from his dad. By the time Sousa was 13, he was good enough that the leader of a circus band tried to talk him into running off with them. But when his father found out about the plan, he stuck Sousa in the Marine Band instead. 
Semper Fidelis was Sousa's personal favorite of all the marches he wrote. It was even played at his funeral, although probably not as cheerfully. Semper Fidelis is the Marine Corps motto. It's Latin for always faithful. Sousa was pretty faithful to the Marine Band. He played in it for seven years. After that, Sousa played violin in theater orchestras, which is how he met his wife. She was a singer in a production of a Gilbert and Sullivan operetta. He was in the orchestra. Sousa wrote operettas, too, 15 of them. Eventually, John Philip Sousa went back to the Marine Band and became its conductor. He led very strict rehearsals, so the band started to sound very good. And Sousa made changes in the music that the Marine Band played. He weeded out pieces that weren't so good and added new ones that were, especially marches that he wrote. The Washington Post newspaper asked John Philip Sousa to compose a piece to promote an essay contest for its readers, so he did, and he named the march Washington Post. The Washington Post became a number one hit both as a march and as a dance in America and Europe. At that point, a British writer said that if Johann Strauss Jr. was the Waltz King, then John Philip Sousa was the March King, and the name March King stuck. After nearly 12 years leading the Marine Band in concerts all over the United States, John Philip Sousa left to start a band of his own. The Sousa Band was not a military band or a marching band. It was a concert band. The famous Sousa Band played to sold-out houses all over America, toured Europe more than once, and spent all of 1911 on a round-the-world tour. During World War I, Sousa enlisted in the Navy as a band director. By then, he was 62 years old and a millionaire, so he told the Navy to pay him a salary of just $1 a month. Sousa felt very strongly about training young musicians. He spent lots of time helping school bands and orchestras. And he made improvements to band instruments. The marching tuba that wraps around your body is named for him, the Sousa phone. At the age of 77, John Philip Sousa was still conducting. The night he died, he had just finished rehearsing for a concert. The last piece he conducted in that rehearsal was his most famous march, The Stars and Stripes Forever. I'm Naomi Lewin. I write classics for kids and produce it with Tim Lanter at WGUC Cincinnati. I hope you can join me again for more classics for kids. Nifty, huh? All sorts of interesting tidbits about his life there. So a march, like I said, is played by a band or an orchestra. Bands and orchestra have, have different families in them. We've talked about them before, but I want to touch base with you to get them back into your head before we play that game at the end. So our four main groups of the orchestra and or band, usually orchestra, I'm, hold on, let me go research something real quick. I'll get right back to you. A few moments later. That's what I thought. I didn't want to teach it to you wrong, so I went and did my research, because that's what you do when you don't know the answer to a question. You go and do a little bit of research before you present the information. So I just did a little research because I thought I remembered that an orchestra is the four main families, woodwinds, brass, percussion, and strings, but a band doesn't normally have strings. That's the difference between a band and an orchestra. The In the March video that, um, I'll, that you, you watched earlier, you may have noticed there were no string instruments. So that's the difference between a band and an orchestra. So anyway, back to it. The four main families of instruments in an orchestra are woodwinds, which are these fellows right here. So that's our, you know, our oboe, our flutes, and all of those things. Then we have our string instruments right here. It's our violin and our viola and our cellos and all of those. And then we have our percussion instruments. There they are right there. Remember, those are all those instruments that you shake, you scrape, or you hit. And then we have our brass instruments over here. That's our trumpet, trombones, tubas, um, French horns, all of that. And there is another family 
called the keyboard family, which is kind of a newer family. That's the pianos and such that have a, a keyboard on them. So watch this little video. It's going to explain to you a little bit about how you classify the different families. It's not like if it's made out of metal, it's brass. That's not how it works. It's really how the sounds are produced on the instruments. So take a look at this video and see what you discover. Maybe you remember your fourth grade music class. The music teacher probably told you about the different types of instruments, such as woodwinds, brass, strings, and percussion. But do you know how we determine which instrument belongs to which group? It has nothing to do with what the instrument is made of, as some might think. While you may be tempted to call a saxophone a brass instrument because it appears to be made out of brass, doing so is incorrect. The method used to correctly classify them is by the way the instrument produces sound. Once the way an instrument produces sound is determined, it can be placed in one of the families of instruments. We'll start with the orchestra's four families of instruments. The strings produce sound by causing strings to vibrate using three methods bowing, plucking, and strumming. Examples include the violin, viola, cello, and contrabass. The woodwinds produce sound by simply blowing air or wind into their instruments. Sometimes the air is used to vibrate a single reed, as with the clarinet, or a double reed, as with the oboe and bassoon. The air itself may even be used to vibrate and cause sound, as the flute does. The brass family produces sound by buzzing their lips into mouthpieces. That's right, they blow raspberries into tubes. Examples include the trumpet, horn, trombone, and tuba. The percussion family all produce sound by either hitting, shaking, or scraping their instruments. Examples include the snare drum, bass drum, crash cymbals, xylophone, and timpani. These four families of instruments make up the orchestra. Sometimes instruments that don't normally play with the orchestra belong to these families. Such an example is the guitar, which is a string instrument, but rarely plays with the orchestra. There are even families of instruments outside those found in the orchestra. These include keyboard and electronic instruments. Keyboard instruments sometimes play with orchestras and orchestral instruments, but they are really designed to be solo instruments. They produce sound different ways, but always through a keyboard played with the hands, or even sometimes with the feet. They include the organ, harpsichord, and piano. Electronic instruments have only been around since electricity has been readily available. They produce sound in an artificial way through the use of electronic amplification. Sometimes you can have hybrid instruments, such as the electric guitar, which is part string instrument, part electronic instrument. Virtually anything used to make music can be classified into these families by asking yourself how the sound is produced. Next time you're listening to music that has instruments, see if you can correctly classify them. Be sure to like and subscribe for more music-related content, and as always, thanks for watching. How was that? Did you learn new, new information there? Good. I hope it was able to explain a little bit about the different families and how the sounds are made in those different families. Um, so we've been sitting a really long time. I know you might be too old to dance, some of you, but if you would like to do this dance, it has absolutely nothing to do with the orchestra or instruments or anything. It's just a fun little brain break dance. If you would like to enjoy this dance, take a little moment, stand up and do this dance. If not, you can just slide that little bar, fast forward through the dance and get to the next part about our instruments. Enjoy. <music>
there is one other type of band that I wanted to introduce you to today before we get to our game, our game at the end. So that type of band is called a marching band, a marching band. You'll see a lot of marching bands in high schools and in colleges. Uh, marching bands are, to me, they're, it blows my mind because there's so much math and geometry that goes into planning a marching band um, the way that they're moving. Because if you look at them, they're like right next to each other when they march. One wrong move and they're going to run into each other. Not only are they gonna hit each other, but their instruments, which have those really uh, metal mouthpieces, a lot of them are right here. So let's say you back into somebody, that instrument, it's gonna go right into their poor little faces. So you have to really know where you're going. You have to follow the the map that's made. So marching man maps are in, they're incredible. They look something like this, right? With all of these things all over them gibberish to me, right? Because I'm not a band uh, band director, but marching band directors, they figure all of this out and they trans, uh, they give that information to their band members and they come up with amazing performances. One of the best marching bands I have ever seen is this one right here. They are able to make um, pictures out of their bodies, out of their, where they're walking and move them. It is insane, you guys. So take a look at this marching band performance. Uh, I'm gonna probably cut and paste it so it's not quite so long. And feel free to Google marching bands at any time that, that you want to, to see some other amazing performances. So take a look at this. <laughs>
Batman, and you've got a text message.
time. All right, we are gonna be doing a listening game with Miss Stacy right now. We're gonna call it Listening 101. So Miss Stacy's going to play you the sound of an instrument from the orchestra. And you have to tell me what instrument do you think you hear? So what you need is a piece of paper and a pencil, and we're gonna number that paper. And as I tell you the, um, as I play it for you, you're gonna write the answer. So answers. it's tough. This is tough because these aren't instruments that we hear every day. And most times we don't hear them played by themselves. We hear them played in the orchestra. So it might be tough and that's good because if it was easy, it would be boring. So get your pencil and your paper and get ready for our game. All right, here is number one. Listen very carefully. Look at the picture and it's gonna give you the choices of your instruments to listen for. Uh, yeah, so have a listen to number one. Here we go. Did you get it? It wasn't super high. So it wasn't the piccolo. So which instrument was closest to the piccolo? If you chose flute. Yeah, you got it right. Go ahead and make that mark. Number one is flute. All right, here is number two. Number two, you ready? One was the flute, and this one is also very similar, but a much higher sound. That would be the piccolo. The piccolo. Did you get piccolo right? Fabulous. Here is number three. Number three. favorite instruments. Number three is our brass instrument, but not too big. It wasn't super low. And did you hear it go wow? There was no slide in it. So number three is the trumpet. Did you get trumpet? All right, moving on to number four. Number four. Number four is one of our string instruments. Our string instruments, it wasn't a high sound, so I know it wasn't the violin, and it wasn't super low, so I know it wasn't the double bass, so the one that's kind of low, but not too low, that one is the cello. Now, cello is spelled kind of funny. It starts with a C, not a C-H. C-E-L-L-O, like jello, but with a C, the cello. That was number four. Number five, up here's number five. Number five is in our percussion family. There are several different types of these instruments in the percussion family, and this is the low one. It's really low, but it doesn't change pitches. It stays the same pitch. So that one is the bass drum. So number five was the bass drum. Moving on to number six. Number six is also a type of drum, but if you notice the sounds, there were two different sounds. They are able to change pitch, so those types of drums are called the timpani. Number six would be the timpani. Moving on to number seven, here we go. Was 
one of our woodwind instruments. Our woodwind instruments, it wasn't quite high enough to be the oboe. Definitely wasn't the flute, so that leaves the clarinet. That's right, number seven was the clarinet. Time for number eight. also woodwind instrument. If the last one was clarinet, logic tells you the answer, but you should be able to tell by listening. It's a high kind of um, a squinched or squinchier, is that a word? A tighter sound. It has a tighter sound to Miss Stacy, and that is the oboe. The oboe uses what's called a double reed, two pieces of wood together like this to make kind of a tighter sound, whereas the clarinet uses one reed and the plastic mouthpiece, which makes kind of a looser sound. So number seven was the, I mean, sorry, number eight was the oboe. Here's number nine. Ooh, number nine is an instrument we have played in our music classroom. I noticed it was not wood sound, it was a metal sound. And our metal xylophone that's really tiny, do you remember what that one was called? The glockenspiel. The glockenspiel it is German, so it has that spiel at the end, S-P-I-E-L. So number nine was the glockenspiel. Here's number ten. Don't let it trick you. string instruments. It was the highest of our string instruments and that's the one that everybody seems to know, the violin. The violin is the answer to number 10. Number 10, <clears throat> excuse me. Time for number 11. So one of our string instruments, it's the biggest string instrument. It's played not over only in the orchestra, but it's also played in our jazz, uh, jazz band. And that was our double bass. That is correct. Number 11 was double bass. Time for number 12. <laughs> Number 12, you should know we played these since you were knee high to Miss Stacy's waist. You were little fellas when we started playing the xylophone. Number 12 was our xylophone in our percussion family. Moving on to number 13, listen carefully. There's some clues for you in number 13. Did you hear the slide? That tells me automatically that it is the trombone. The trombone is number 13 from our brass family and add that little slide in it. Here is number 14, we're in the final stretch. Number 14, a lot of you all like to play this one. This is a staple in a marching band in the drum line of the marching band. It has that distinct sound when you hit it, it goes and that was our 
snare drum. Number 14 was the snare drum. Number 15, final question. If you've processed, you, you, you can already tell what it's going to be, but in case you didn't notice out of the instruments, which ones we've already played, here is number 15. Number 15, the low brass instrument, the giant brass instrument. We call that the tuba, the tuba. Thanks for playing our game, our listening game. How'd you do? Did you do well? Honestly, be honest with yourself. Let Miss Stacy know how you did on that little, uh, that little game show game. Post a picture of your answers like this. You can put your face next to it if you want. Be like, these are my answers, Miss Daisy. Or you can just take a picture of it like that and post it so that I can take a look at how you did. At the top, give me a score. Maybe you got, you know, 13 out of 15. Do me a favor and at the top, do a little circle so I can make sure to notice that right away. Remember, your grade is not based on how many you got correct. Your grade is if you just post a picture of it. If yours says, you know, two out of 15, that will tell Miss Stacy we'll need to play a little bit more. That's okay. So your grade is not the score that you get. The grade is whether you post this picture. And I might be giving some virtual prizes for you if you post those pictures. Of course, they're not real. I wish I could give you real prizes, but virtual prizes are pretty funny. So I hope that I'm able to upload lots of virtual prizes for you after you post your score. Got it? Thanks for playing. All right, my loves, I hope you had an amazing time today learning about Veterans Day, which is super important. Remember to thank those veterans if you see them and the marching band and the parades and John Philip Sousa, our March King, and playing that game today to try to identify some of those instruments that we hear, not only see, but hear. That's going to be really important that we work on our listening ears when we are doing music. A lot of the times you don't get to see pictures of things and you have to try to identify things by how they sound. It's a super important skill as a musician. So make sure that um, you, you got all that done. If you posted your picture of your score, great. And I hope to hand out some virtual prizes. That is all I have for you today. Let me know what you thought about our instruments or if you have any questions or comments, you can comment on our team's page. Thank you for joining us for music time today and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Oh, you guys, I forgot. I found a couple of sites online that have instrument games for you. So you can click on them and listen to instruments and choose the instrument that you think you hear. Um, there's one that is the Magic Flute, which is a super awesome opera that we're going to talk about later. But you can click and choose the instruments that you hear. And then a couple of other ones that I found. These are not required. They're just really fun if you want to go visit these sites. Some of them require Adobe. Um, so if it says, you know, doesn't work, you just hit run for Adobe and it will come up. If they work, great. If they don't, mm, sorry, sometimes that happens on, on school computers. So I am going to post those links to those, um, the game sites here below, and you are welcome to do those anytime you want to. If you like them, let me know, and I will make sure I include them in other lessons as well. Have a great night. World Wide Web? Is there a way to put this on just the American part? Hmm? Oh, <clears throat> greetings. Today, I, Sam, the American Eagle, am here to offer you something never before seen on the internet. Culture, morality, and patriotism. You may proceed. <laughs> We, the 
the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. Wait a minute, I memorized this part. Oh yes, and keep the world safe from weirdos have brought forth it. Never mind. That was terrible! Horrendous! I'm offended! I'm appalled! So what are we gonna do? Oh, what else? Email it to everybody we know! Good idea. This has been Music Time with Miss Stacy. I miss you, I love you, and I will see you soon.